Hello once more, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted you can join us for our latest expert series of sponsored videos, examining the growing, vibrant and often colourful industry of citizenship by investment. This involves the offer of citizenships and passports by predominantly smaller countries, typically Caribbean or Mediterranean islands, in return for infrastructure or property investments from wealthy families. Now, one of the prominent participants in this sphere is the delightful island nation of Dominica, blessed by natural beauty, but like much of the Caribbean, cursed by tropical storms, which regularly ravage the landscape. I'm pleased that His Excellency Emmanuel Nanthan, head of the CBI unit for the Commonwealth of Dominica, can join us for today's discussion. Now, during the COVID era, what sort of changes have you seen, Your Excellency, in the pattern of applications from wealthy families who wish to secure citizenship through investment in Dominica? It's always my pleasure being here with you, uh, with you on your program. Uh, for Dominica during the COVID period, we initially had uh, a slowdown in application, but after people realized it's going to continue, then we had an increase in application. I must say uh, the difference in, in application is a greater interest in people coming in, mainly from uh, other well-off, maybe first world countries, North America, uh, USA, Canada. And the, the interesting thing is that uh, there are some people who are now looking at to move into Dominica. People do not just want to uh, apply for citizenship. They're looking for new homes for the families. Uh, they're looking for have, to have uh, buildings, uh, set up offices. And I have had people coming in, into my office to say, uh, I am here, how do I apply? And how do I, I uh, how, how can I go on and buy or build a business in Dominica? Because I want to move here. I want to move here with my family. And I have friends who want to join me and who want to move here as well. So we had some amendments in our application where uh, we, we allow the, the dependents to increase, not just from a, uh, your, your spouse and your immediate children, parents, uh, but you could also include the parents of, of your spouse. And you could include this, your siblings uh, up to 25 years uh, once they are unmarried and without children. So that this has taken great effect. And a number of wealthy families are looking at staying together, being together, and some of them, I've even expressed interest in moving to Dominica, buying homes here and opening businesses here. And Dominica is known for its unspoilt environment, featured in the Pirates of the Caribbean film, and is also carving a niche in renewable energy. Has the global appetite for this sustainable investment encouraged interest from wealthy families in your island? Yes, you're right. Our nation is known as the nature island of the Caribbean. And uh, after the hurricane of 2017, Hurricane Maria, the Prime Minister pledged uh, to build the world's first climate resilient country. And we are on that path. So everything has been built along those lines. We are looking at, uh, we are, uh, we'll be starting construction soon on a geothermal plant where we would be producing energies from uh, the natural earth heat uh, for not just for ourselves, but to export to the neighboring countries of Guadeloupe uh, and Martinique as well. Uh, we are building our roads, our homes uh, with the climate resilient, uh, in a climate resilient way to keep in principle with what the Prime Minister announced. We have put on a vulnerability risk fund, open up uh, at, at the East Caribbean Central Bank, where every month we deposit 500,000 uh, EC dollars into that account uh, for, in case we have disasters in the future. So moving forward, uh, renewable energy uh, is key for us. Keep it, we want to look look at, at the, we are committed to our eco, eco tourism. Our hotels that we, we are building are all built in line with, with uh, uh, our, our eco mandate. And that is what is, uh, what is articulated by the prime minister and his office. We are developing agriculture uh, in a way that will be, that will help uh, without uh, too much potential for, for devastation. So we are really and truly trying to continue our development uh, along those lines. And by and large, people from around the world are seeing or hearing what we are doing and they have expressed interest. Some of them are coming in to be partners with our local uh, Dominicans to partner in some of those projects and development as well. 
So these um, devastating hurricanes and tropical storms you've been talking about, I mean, bearing in mind the periodic damage which Dominica has suffered from these events, what have been the key achievements for you of the CBI programme in rebuilding the island's infrastructure, rehousing communities, for instance? I believe uh, the CBI has been a saviour for Dominica following uh, the national disasters. So CBI funds were used to build over and handle his over so far to over 2,000 families around Dominica. These homes are built uh, to withstand Category 5 uh, hurricanes. They are built uh, in solid concrete with, with uh, technologies that will, would help uh, against earthquake uh, and hurricanes uh, and flooding. Uh, CBI funding has been utilized to um, develop our infrastructure. Our road network is being uh, redone uh, in a resilient way. Uh, we have built a number of bridges uh, with funds from the CBI following the disasters. But not just only that, we're looking at healthcare. Funds from CBI has been utilized for, to develop a brand new hospital uh, in Marigot, one of the largest communities in Dominica, and uh, very close to the airport. That's a 70 room hotel, sorry, 70 room, 70 bed, bed uh, uh, hospital out in that area. And we have built uh, 13 health centers in almost every community around Dominica, well, almost every district around Dominica. So health centers have been built, uh, and they have been built in resilient ways as well to provide facilities for uh, the, the ordinary folk uh, in those communities. So for us, CBI has been uh, instrumental in roads, uh, in, in, in hospitals, in schools. So really and truly, the funds are utilized everywhere in the development uh, and advancement of infrastructure for the benefit of the people of Dominica. Is there perhaps a scope for more collaboration rather than competition across the Caribbean region when it comes to shaping policies, particularly the due diligence procedures for citizenship by investment programmes? I think uh, you, you're right here in that uh, in the Caribbean, we have a number of countries offering, offering uh, citizenship through investments. You have uh, the, the other islands, but we are closer, to, closer together than most people realize. Most of us who do it, we share the same Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. We share the same currency. We share, we share the same monetary union. So we have a close relationship. We use the same due diligence firms that are used by the international banks all around. And these are the top firms in the world to provide due diligence. We all run um, our applications through, through uh, our regional network for intelligence, both financial and criminal intelligence. So we do those things. Uh, we see this type of development happening uh, around in, the, in our islands. So in Dominica, we're doing uh, the hotels, we're doing the houses, we're starting our international airport with funds from the CBI as well, we're doing hospitals and health centers. In the other countries, they're doing similar projects. And uh, we encourage each other and, and we speak to each other. We consent we, uh, and meet uh, periodically to analyze and see what we're doing so that we could use best practices for each other. So really and truly in the Caribbean, we work together and we see ourselves as each other's keeper. We are, we are in fact, our brother's keeper. And we're looking that we can get the industry to continue to be strong, to be solid. Because uh, if one fails, it would not necessarily affect just that country, but the, but the other. In the Caribbean, we see when your neighbor house is on fire, you wet yours. And of course, you share the same cricket team as well. And we share the West Indies. So, um, and we will keep on monitoring developments both on and off the pitch and I look forward to further conversations with you, Emmanuel. Well, thank you very much. I wish the English team do much better in the Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>